All right, y'all. Good morning, everybody. This is a uh, this is a special I can tune day show replay. The uh, the whole not the whole office, but now three of us in the office have had COVID, so we have uh, decided to close the office down, the studio down for a few days, and get back on track. And um, I wouldn't call it an outbreak, but uh, it's just a, uh, it's a, a few of us had COVID. <laughs> and um, so we decided to, uh, to, to uh, make that executive decision and uh, run a, a replay today. This will be a replay that y'all, I pray, will enjoy. Uh, it is a, uh, a replay of the uh, the conversation that came out of the boat brawl, the recent boat brawl, and uh, this will allow us to retool, recuperate, and get everybody back on deck. I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. Eunice is now fine. Jaleel now has COVID, and uh, we want to make sure that uh, Tristan, Donna, and Lexis does not get COVID. Donna, of course, already had it. Had no connection with us. Donna had it like four weeks ago now and took three weeks off to recuperate. So we definitely don't want to see Donna get, you know, in any way reinfected. We don't want to see anybody else on our team get get infected. So this is a, um, this is going to be a replay today. So the studio is empty. Just me. I can't, I can't direct the show and be on the show. <laughs> and uh, I don't want I don't want Tristan in the building. And Jaleel is our lead director. So that's our two men are not available. And uh, we still going to do this show. So this is a replay today. Again, it's a replay because uh, uh, some of the Oxio team members have, have COVID. Now three. And we are uh, taking today off. So y'all enjoy this replay. Alabama Boat World Conversation. Conversation. Y'all had a lot to say. All right, this is the Doc and Tunday Show. Columbia, South Carolina, it's official. Healthy Laughter season has begun. The Healthy Laughter National Stand Up Comedy Tour comes home to Columbia, South Carolina this September. There'll be comedy showcases, free health screenings, power walk exercise days, plus the beginning of production of our national stand up comedy television series, Healthy Laughter, laughing your way to a healthier life. To get more information, log on to healthylaughtercomedy.com. That's healthylaughtercomedy.com. And a huge thank you to our sponsors, community partners, and supporters. Wellsprings Family Medicine, Woods Automotive Sales, Be Insured for Life Health Agency, Linked Up Church, P&B Promotionals, Presley Cares Mortuary, KRJ Consulting, SGRX Saves, Chris and Brenda Bethel, Jamie and Tamika Isaac Divine, Abel SC, it's Healthy Laughter Homecoming, Columbia, South Carolina. It's your brother, Akin Tunde. And until showtime, I'm going to see y'all when I see y'all. Peace. All right, y'all. Okay. This is going to be an interesting show today, y'all. Interesting. <laughs> you know, I was just telling Dr. Terrence Wells that um, that who knew when we booked him that he would be on this on a on a day that's so appropriate for him to be the guest to have this conversation. 
you know, like, who knew? Who knew that this Boke Doc brawl was going to happen over the weekend and then we would have Dr. Wells in the house able to to have this talk, to have this conversation? I think it's so appropriate. He'll be coming up in, in, in segment one. But uh, but uh, I, I, have to, I, have to, I have to talk about this because, first of all, I didn't know anything about this brawl. I had, I had absolutely no idea. I, uh, Sunday, we had first Sundays, so we were focused on that. I think it happened on Saturday, I believe. And so, and I'm traditionally, I'm a little bit um, behind on social media anyway. So I'm a little bit off sometimes about what's, what's actually happening, what's going on. And so I didn't know. I had no idea. So Pastor Lenny, who was always ahead of me, the, the running joke is, 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 is that Pastor Lenny is way ahead of me when it comes to social media. And then I'm way ahead of Pastor Tuck. Pastor Tuck is like way behind on social media. Stuff be happening, he has absolutely no clue of what's going on, right? So that's that's normally the case. So I find out yesterday morning as I'm prepping to do the praise party show. So I go online and I look at the videos and 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 of course Pastor Lenny had the best the access to the best videos. And, and I find out actually what happens. Let me tell let me tell y'all something. That was probably one of the most, mm, what's the proper word for it? It's a benchmark. It's a benchmark in terms of culture. When you have something that happened, that happened, that was not, it wasn't any plan. It wasn't any necessarily any particular group that decided that this was going to happen. It wasn't like a gang. It, w- it wasn't like a, when I say a gang, I'm not talking about, I'm not, it wasn't a motorcycle gang. It wasn't a, 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 a hood South Central gang. It wasn't a white supremacist gang. It was organic rage. It was organic pack mentality. It was it was what happens that, that that you do not see that consistently happens. Usually, there's no cameras around. It's happened historically for years where somebody got assaulted or somebody got ganged or somebody took a beat down, but nobody was there to film it. Nobody was there to help. In this case, all of these factors came together where there was a crowd, where there were cameras, there were, where there was a clear response, and it it became a a a, a viral internet sensation or something that happened that probably will will, will be a, a benchmark. The reason why I say it'll be a benchmark because <sighs> folks are responding to this in a way that I haven't seen in, a, in quite a while. And I'm, I'm just going to come down the street and tell you about it. Black folks. Black folks is responding. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, boy, folks is really happy. Like people, people been calling and texting me like, 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 like folks got reparations <laughs> and I'm like, what? I'm like, but what it is, is it's the pent up rage. It's the mindset. It's the, it's the anger. It's the frustration. It's the feeling of ret- retribution. And it is all coming to a head in that particular moment. And in response to that moment, now I don't want to give the, the situation too much credit because you got to be careful with that. Can't give something too much credit, but you should be aware of what this means. And I think on all sides, we need to be aware. Let me say this right here. Good white folks, talk to the talk to the to the to the to the, to the racist ones. Not and I'm not talking about racism, because racism is a system. It's a construct. It's a broader system that's designed to keep a people of certain groups down. I'm talking about a racist mindset. There's a there's a consistent and and I and I'll be honest with you, I think it's a growing mindset where people who have racist ideologies and thoughts and thinkings and leanings that at one time they would keep to themselves. They would only talk about it at the house, at the dinner table, in the bedroom with with their wife or their husband. Now people are emboldened to bring it right out to the street and talk about it in public spaces, on talk radio, on social media, in chat rooms. People are emboldened in a way like never before. Because of that mindset, I believe that's why you have the acting out. That's why you have this mindset. I can I can respond with 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 no retribution without cause. I can operate with impunity. Which is which is scary, which is a problem because you think nothing can happen to you. Just like just like January 6th, people was acting out. 
people with good jobs and houses and good and 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 and, and, and standings in communities wrecked their life doing prison time. Had to had got a mortgage their house to pay for legal bills. Got to sell something, getting fired because somebody saw you on video wilding out. Even in this boat brawl situation in Alabama, the owners of the boat, the, pe- the folks who started the fight, the folks who jumped the brother on the, on, on the dock, these folks is dealing with some retribution because apparently they have a business back home. And now they're paying the cost with the business. Man, you got to think this stuff through. You got to consider what are the repercussions of my actions? Yeah, let me say this right here. One thing that was that was clear to me in that video that everybody needed to take stock of. There's been a lot of talk about people because people have been saying it loosely and, and, and throwing it around. It's something I thought about and, and even mentioned on this very show. But people talk about, oh, you, oh, it'll be a race war. It'll be a race war. First of all, we need to shut that down. And we need to make sure that we are clear about how we should pray and how we should speak and how we should not respond. Here's a factor that you cannot control in situations like this. And it was evident in that video. Watch this right here. What you can't control is the youth response. You cannot control them young folks. When them jokers get riled up and get angry and it's a whole bunch of them, you can't control what might happen. Look at New York just last week. Pure pandemonium over some doggone PlayStation games and a promise of some cash from a social media uh, 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 influencer. Hey, they didn't see that coming. I'm talking about thousands of young people in New York in, in whatever street corner that was wilding out. Police couldn't do nothing. That's what you cannot control, pent up anger and aggression and folks who've been sitting in the house, sucking up air conditioning, playing PlayStation and, 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 and watching Netflix. The young people in the, in, 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 in the studio don't like that. <laughs> it's real talk. Here's what I'm saying, y'all. We got to really be cognizant and aware of what's happening right now. We got to be a cognizant and aware of what is happening with our young men in regards to sexuality, which is a topic that we're going to cover today. Yeah, we, we did, that was our focus for the day. The sexualization, the sexuality of young men. We got Dr. Terrence Wells, our special guest today. But then this whole boat brawl thing, boat dock brawl thing happens, and we got to deal with that. Because it's worthy of a conversation, of worthy, it's worthy of a response. Now, I'm giving my probably more balanced, serious commentary. I'm probably going to be cutting up in just a little bit. So uh, get ready for that. But... I'm just saying, we got to really be aware and considerate of the times we're living in and what is actually going on. Listen, y'all. Time to get everything started. I'm going to see what the crew got to say. The family is in the house. On Clubhouse, on Facebook, and on YouTube. Let me see who's here. Let me do my shout outs. Brother Corey Coleman is in the house. What's up, Brother Corey? Shaquilla is in the house. What's up, sis? Good to see you. Ashley Bailey is in the house. Canada's finest in the building. See what Ashley got to say. I'm sure she got some some lunacy. (laughs) Nina, what's up, Nina? How you doing, sis? Real Donna J is in the building. Donna is on Clubhouse. She's not back yet from fighting COVID, but she's doing much, much better. I can report that. Sherry's in the house. Good morning, Sherry. Matilda, oh, Mathilda is in the house. Shonda is in the house. Robin is in the house. Jermaine is in the house. Apostle Bradley is in the house. Angela Johnson is in the house. All right. Ronice is in the house. Jessica is in the house. Kimberly is in the house. Good morning. Valencia, good morning. Tina, good morning. Mr. Good Brother is in the house. Love it. I hear you, Mr. Good Brother. Uh, Fatina is in the house. Paul, no face, is in the house. <laughs> Fo Lake is in the building. What's up, Fo Lake? How you doing, man? Lakeisha, good morning. Demond Cherry just got married, is in the house. What's up, Demond? Marcus, what's up, Marcus? How you doing, sir? Mary, oh, Marie, or is that Mar- uh Yeah, that's Mary. M-E-R-I. That's a different spelling. What's up, Mary? Chrissy J is in the house. Leon, what's up, sir? Leon, the Oxshow security guard, is in the house. 
Hey, Paul. What's up, Paul? How you doing, Paul? My brother. Right Direction Church International. Paul Gilliard. What's up, sir? Danny. Danny's in the house. Rashandra. How you doing, man? I'm good to see you. Sway. Suedo Chase. Suedo Chase. All right. Suedo Chase. There it is. Dr. Joey is in the house. Your Tesco is in the house. I love it. Your Tesco. Did I say that right? Your Tesco, your Tesco. Tanisha is in the house. Celeste is in the building. What's up, Celeste? Lede is in the house. My mother in love. Mother E is in the house. How you doing, ma'am? Good to see you here this morning. Your daughter's here too. Uh, what's up? I, 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 oh, I am. Londa, Nicole. I love it. Craig is in the house. Stop. Integration. In, stop integration? Okay. All right. Jesus. All right. Listen, I don't know what that's about. Hold on. But it's time to get it started, y'all. I'm sure this will be an interesting show this morning. We got Dr. Terrence Wells that will be joining us in segment one. I got Pastor Tuck in the building. Donna's on, well, and still re- re- uh, getting better and getting prepared to come back. But your is in the house, right over there for me. Hey, family, it's time to get this show started. Call your mama, call your daddy, call your auntie, call your cousin, call your coworkers, call your family, call your neighbor down the street. That one who you be getting in arguments with, the one who move your trash can, the one who don't keep uh, accept your packages when Amazon drop them off. Call them all right now and let them know that the Akin Tunde show is about to start. Let's go. Another track lay production. But no joke entertainment. Let's go. Akin Tunde is gonna make you laugh for loud. So you come on screaming out. Akin Tunde is gonna make you laugh for loud. So come on screaming out. It's the Akin Tune Day Show. Say what? Say what? You heard what I said? That's right, y'all. The, the, the Akin Tune Day Show. Spell it. A K I N Tune Day. This is Pella Myers Jr. of P and B Promotionals, and you're inside the Akin Tune Day Show. Greetings. I am Daryl Presley owner and operator of Presley Cares Mortuary Services of West Columbia, South Carolina. Our mission here at Presley's is to provide excellent, quality, superior funeral service to all, regardless of economic status, religion, or race. With our society being embedded with a diverse class of people, our staff here at Presley's pledges to offer only one class of service and that is superior. So rendering professional services to the families that call upon us is not an option, it's mandatory. Presley Cares Mortuary Services, where we are caring for you and your loved one. Looking for promotional products and apparel? Look no further than P&B Promotionals. Place your brand and logo on just about anything with P&B Promotionals over 800,000 products. Caps, travel mugs, drawstring bags, water bottles, stadium cups, umbrellas, tote bags, and t-shirts. P&B Promotionals is a nationally certified advertising company. Log on to pbpromotionals.com and start your order now. pbpromotionals.com Imprinting the best for less. At my church, we help people get better by teaching them how the word works. And we want to make sure there is no excuse not to get the word. It's our goal to make all of our ministries accessible on every smartphone, tablet, PC, and television connected to the internet. So whether you're a man who needs some wisdom, a woman who needs some encouragement, or a couple who needs guidance, the My Church channel has just what you need. Simply search for the My Church Channel on Roku, Fire Stick, or Apple TV, or visit MyChurchChannel.org. You can also download the My Church On The Go app from Apple or Google Play App Store. Constantly on the move? Check out the Word At My Church podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Or simply download the Word At My Church skill on your Alexa-enabled device. But whatever you do, make sure to stay connected. See you soon. 
It's the Ock and Tune Day Show. Say what? Say what? You heard what I said. That's right, y'all. The, the, the Ock and Tune Day Show. Smell it. A-K-I-N, uh, 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 Tune Day. Oh, yeah. All right, y'all. Let me let the production crew know something. When y'all, when y'all walk up to me during the show and, and say something, I don't know what y'all said. <laughs> Write it down. <laughs> y'all should see them. Like they've been, they've been in the, in the. So, so just so y'all know how to how to how to set up in here. My desk sits like in the in kind of in the front left of the studio. <laughs> the production room. Where the director and the production assistants are in, they're right to my right. There's a glass there and there's a door there. And in the middle of the show, they be talking to me. I'm like, what? I don't know what y'all saying. <laughs> What's up, fam? How y'all doing? Happy Tuesday to everybody out there. And we appreciate y'all for watching and listening to the I Can Tune Day show. We don't take it lightly that y'all would spend time with us. And uh, we appreciate any 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 attention y'all give us. We, we, we'll take it. We'll take it. Not that we're attention seekers. We just receive it and try to utilize it to God's glory. Listen, I want to I want to have a conversation today about this this uh, Alabama boat brawl, and then we have the author of this book, which I suggest you get. I highly suggest you get this book, particularly if you are raising sons, whether they are teenagers, preteens, uh, 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 young, small children. Whatever category, adolescence, whatever category they fall into, I highly suggest you read this book. I'm I'm thoroughly loving it, and I want to talk about just two chapters. I'm gonna focus on two chapters today, because it's talking about Dr. Terrence Wells is is, is the author of this book, and it's talking about really a, a a guide for planning black males for for raising black males into intelligent, well-adjusted men in the 21st century. And two chapters I want to talk about today is the sexualization of young black males. And another chapter that I find very interesting is called Rap Poison. Dr. Wells will be up in just a couple of seconds. I shouldn't say a couple of seconds, but a a minute or two. But also, we're going to talk about, get his perspective from a a clinical standpoint of what happened, just what happened uh, in Alabama. Because there's there's a, a, I I thought it was just so appropriate that he would be on today to talk about what is the, what is the professional approach, the, the professional eye of what happened this this weekend there's a spiritual eye and i want to talk about that i want to talk about that with pastor tuck uh and i got my my wife of 27 years 20 20 28 this year uh we've been together and uh my uh life partner business partner uh co-parent um uh the woman who can who can who who really can make my day phenomenal and if and if and if we get in a little, little argument she can, she can have me all day uh, stressing and worrying about what I got to do to get back in her good graces. Let's welcome to the show uh, my wife of 27 years and uh, my homeboy, my friend, good brother, and uh, wonderful co-host of the I Can Tune This Show, Pastor Lewis Tucker. What's up, family? How y'all doing? Good. What it do? Doing all right, sir. Doing all right. Let's, go on. Let's get Yanissa up. All right. Can y'all hear Yanissa? Yeah. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wow. Boy, we got Yanissa in the building. Well, y'all, y'all don't know how, how much of a, a, a milestone this is right here to get you this in the building, y'all. It's so I, extra. I, no, I, you, y'all, I works hard to get you this in this building. He, so, does that, he doesn't work that hard. <laughs> he simply says, hey, I need you to come No, in. no, no. You, y'all don't know how many times I'm like, yeah, hey, we, got, we got a topic. We talking about this today, you know, and and and, uh, and I'm like, would you come by? And she's she like, now I got to do this and I got to meet. And she's true enough. She 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 doing stuff. She She's on, okay. doing the business did, did, stuff. Did you, you. you have to get somebody to separate colors of jelly beans and, <laughs> you know, uh, M&M's, you know, she she only wanted green M&M's, and, you know. <laughs> Her, her water to be 52 degrees oh, exactly yeah. full contract rider you know what i'm saying got, got to have her dressing room get you know mm. got, got to have you know her 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 manager sent me over her lighting grid Seven, you know. 73 <laughs> degrees in the dressing room i'm taking notes because yeah, none room. of that stuff is done so i I need, to, I need to make sure i have I with your man, you know, with your management group, your production Hilarious. group. Yeah. They, they, they didn't have my rider, right? If that's the case, no, none Hilarious. of that stuff, none of that stuff was in place. But you came on anyhow because you're a professional. Th- there we I'm go. Showed up anyway. Come on now, look at look what the Lord has done. But no, this is this gonna be a good show today. Again, I got t- Dr. Terrence Wells coming up in just a little bit. But again, I, me and Pastor Tuck talked yesterday morning for about a smooth hour or more it's about something completely different that yeah. had nothing to do. 
with, with the boat brawl, and then because we had we had no clue that this boat brawl had even taken place. That's how out of touch we cool. were. Out of touch. The whole the whole. I mean, all the social media talking about it, and uh, and then I and I come off. I, I hang up with Pastor Tuck, and I'm about to get ready to head over here to to re, to do the praise party show with, with Pastor Lenny, and then Pastor Lenny sends me a, like he tell you give me a list of what we're gonna talk about for the day, and he was like, sure. He's this this is how he starts the text. Surely you you are aware of the Alabama a doc brawl. I'm like, what? And, and I'm like, yes. and when I saw it, I said, oh, Lord, what done happened now? Then I, then I, as soon as I go to social media, the first thing I see is Ricky Smiley. Ricky Smiley, who was a certified nut. Ricky Smiley talking about he interviewing the, 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 the chair on, on his show. I said, what? I'm like, oh, my God. So, so let me just get y'all immediate responses. First of all, uh, Eunice was unaware because she was doing handling first Sundays like me, so she didn't know about it. And so, so let me just get y'all first immediate response on, on what happened. Go ahead, Eunice. Well, first, a girlfriend of mine, she just sent me a text, and she just said, "I'm so proud of my people right now." With the, with the, uh, <laughs> what do you call it, a meme of somebody eating a rib? Oh my uh, god! And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And she was like, "Girl." You didn't see the stuff about um, Alabama? I was like, no. And she sent me not one, not two, yeah, but three, yeah, different vantage points, yeah, um, and videos and and different things um, on because you know, you know, black Twitter, yeah, just us the way we do memes after an event, and we're so quick about it, yeah, it's oh, hilarious. quick, and so she sent me the whole package, and when I started watching it, I have to say that I had a visceral. Kind of going back to your point, I can see Yeah, I had a visceral, like a a physical reaction mm -hmm. to what I was watching, mm -hmm. and um, and I had some, you know, we can talk about it later. But I had some conversations with a girlfriend of mine, another girlfriend of mine, mm -hmm. who was just as passionate and just as you know, just like having a, a physical and emotional reaction to it. Right. And I really think it's it's in our DNA. It's it's something that's been embedded in us since. You know, dare I say, since slavery, mm -hmm. and so what you see is something that we cannot control because it it's 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 something that's been passed on, um, and you know, um, uh, it's emotional. The, the the guest speaker may be able to you know give us more of a in depth you know more scientific mm -hmm. um, explanation of that. But right. when I tell you that um, it wasn't so much, you know, like you know, I guess. People were kind of, you know, it was like shock, mm -hmm. but it was more like, you know, it did feel like <laughs> not reparations is the right. word that I continue to use, but it did feel like, you know, like, there you go. Like, here you go. Yeah. You know, like some, because for whatever reason, <laughs> you know, there's still, there's just particularly since Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've noticed yeah. there's just been this emboldening. You know, disemboldment by some some people. Yeah, that they can just do whatever, whenever, however, and that there are no consequences. Yeah. And so, you know, I was saying yesterday that, um, you know, our parents and our grandparents, they were just trying to survive. Right. 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 And you know, your mama would, your grandmama, or your mama would beat you mm -hmm. to keep you in line. Yeah. So. A white the, the quote unquote with the quote was so the white man doesn't get his hands on you. Mm -hmm. um, oh Lord. So they were just trying to survive, but yeah. there's another generation here. Oh, well, these jokers ain't trying to survive. These these jokers they're, action. They're like, right. yeah, um, yeah, we're not doing this. Yeah. And that that young man that jumped, that 16 year old that jumped in that in that in that. I'm sorry, it's not a pool. That was it no, was like, that was a. <laughs> it's like a ocean. It wasn't an ocean, but. That was, you know, that wasn't a little bit of water. Yeah. He just instinctively just jumped off the boat into the water. That is something else. Well, there's, there's something that's to be said about that. I, we, could, we Let's come back to that because I, I'm actually going to play the video of that. So I got so I got a couple of different videos I'm going to play. And then, um, and, and, and so, well, no, I actually got three different videos I'm going to play, right? So it took me a while to find one because when I first heard about it, all I, all I could find is the response videos. That's all I could find. And, it's, and it was long, and I was like, oh, my. So I'm, like, trying to, I, I, I couldn't even find it to see what was happening because I kept running up on so many people, so many YouTubers and Facebookers yeah. responding to it, you know. So, but finally I found, leave the past Lenny once again. The past Linda sent me two clean links with nothing but good footage, and I was like, "Oh!" Then that's when it really hit me. Yeah. Oh, oh, Pastor Linda is Pastor Linda is on. Got footage like he was there. <laughs> 
for real. Like for real, for real. Like, like, he, he, got, was, like he got, like he got security cam. <laughs> like first person vantage point. Yeah, like for real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you get? Can you send me that security cam from right, right there off the dock? Yeah, yeah. I need that one right there. Security but, camera number twelve, right there. Pastor Tuck, go ahead and jump in. Like, well, like, what was your when you first saw? What was your immediate thought? I'm coming to y'all comments on Clubhouse, Love. Facebook, and YouTube. And like I said, in just a couple of minutes, I got Dr. Terrence Wells. That, that'll be up after we play the first video. Go ahead, Pastor Tuck. Look, I, I know, I know, I know. I might have uh, gone into reputation as more the uh, the straight man, but since Jason hasn't been here, I think his spirit has come upon me. So uh, you're not getting nothing spiritual out of me on this. One. I'm, I'm just telling you. Um, oh, I'm just you telling said. You. I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just telling you. Uh, That's you know, a lie. I, 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 I don't know, man. I think it's. I think I don't think it's really nothing real scientific about it. I think human nature, our flesh, our human nature just gets a certain satisfaction about watching people getting their come up it's you know it's like you 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 have you have and, and, and I seriously I seriously think it comes from this this internal sense of justice that we have mm -hmm. you know and, and part of that part of that might be righteous part of it is part of his flesh mm -hmm. but it's like you know this 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 old testament eye for an eye two for a tooth yeah. you know what I'm saying you you, you want to see somebody get what they deserve yeah you know, you know, we, we, we of course, you know, as save, you know, we we recognize, you know, the the concept of mercy and, you know, not getting what you deserve. Yeah. And we appreciate, you know, the blood of Christ and all of that. Yeah. But it's something on the inside of you that's still unsaved part of you. You get some satisfaction out of seeing it. I mean, <laughs> we see so many videos <laughs> on, on on social media and, 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 and even me as a pastor. Who, who I mean, I love the Lord. You know, I live by the word. Yeah. But I'll see these videos, and it's something in me to just get so much satisfaction out of seeing folk get it. Yeah. I, I mean, it, I mean, not not even this one. I remember, I remember seeing one, and this dude, he like pulling off his shirt. He keep on talking, and dude telling dude back up, back yeah. up. Dude keep yeah. on running on, and dude shoot him in the leg, and then he laid on the ground yeah. going, "Ow!" <laughs> oh, and that's I'm laughing <laughs> my back off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, that was a and, and I'm like, funny screen. You asked for that. My man you asked you to back up like yeah. 15 like, times, like several times, over yeah, and, and over again. And you keep on running at him. It's like, bro, you asked for that. Yeah. I can't, I can't feel bad for you at this point. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. a human being, maybe I should, but something in me just can't. I can't, I can't even garner no sympathy for you. Yeah. The grown, but see, the grown man. See, here's the thing about it is grown men recognize this, there's consequences and repercussions. There's exactly. an equal and opposite reaction for every action that you take. And exactly. when somebody tell you, give you time after time, opportunity after opportunity to do the right thing, and you determine that you're not going to do it, that, my friend, is on you. And 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 I and I always go back to the fact that y'all y'all hear me all the time. There's there's Pastor Tuck and then there's Tuck. And Tuck is that dude that I try to keep <laughs> locked up. You know, I, they they say you crucify your flesh daily. I have to get I have to keep going back to Lowe's and get new nails to hold that big joke up on the cross. Because I'm telling you, he keep climbing down, and I'm like, hold up, hold up, get back up there, bro, because you don't belong down here with with civilized folks. And and I just think about what would have happened if dude would have ran up on me. Yeah. It could have been a show enough problem. Yeah. I, so know, I recognize how crazy this situation was. I, you know, let me say what I thank God for. I thank God, and I, I was telling the units this yesterday. I just thank God that there were no pistols out there. Exactly. Then my man won't arm. Nobody had a gun. For sure. Yeah, or, or if they my had a gun, was not armed they did not pull it out. Because if if they would have ran up on my man and he was an armed joker, oh. how many? How much bloodshed would have been out there? Oh my God! Because it, it, it would have been over. And, and again, that that's the grace of God. And so, so, but, but I know there's been different, a lot of the videos that I've seen and I'm coming, I'm coming to clubhouse. I'm coming to y'all comments. See y'all got them. I'm about to play this video though. Uh, a lot of the videos that I saw were of the fight at the moment, just before dude got jumped and then he threw up the hat, which is hilarious oh. all in itself. I mean, you can, you can, you, it, it, <laughs> that was the official. <laughs> That was the, that was, every. Uh, let me tell you something. Black, black every black person knew, knew what that was. That was that was like hey. that was the bad signal. <laughs> that was the bad signal. <laughs> Everybody knew what that was. But 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 a lot of videos start just before that. But I found a video that has a significant amount of the preliminary incident. What happened prior to that led up to the altercation, and it really yeah. gives great context. And and here's a dope part about it. There's a woman 
who is actually narrating what's happening and she's giving yeah. you the full setup and context yeah. of what happened. So Jaleel, get that video ready. I'm going to read some of these comments and uh, I'm going I'm to I'm start on Clubhouse. I'll do Facebook after we play the video and like, like I said, just in a little bit, the author of Black Sunshine, Dr. Terrence Wells, PhD, will be our guest in just a few minutes. Y'all stay right there for that. Um, I, will, I will say my favorite part because <laughs> I didn't even see that. I, I saw several videos my daughter sent me, I guess, the Instagram. You know how they have the four or five videos connected? Yeah. And I, I didn't even get to the last video. My favorite part was the old man with the chair. Because yeah. I kept hearing people talking about this chair, and I didn't know what was going on. No, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't, let's, don't go there yet. Don't go to the chair yet. No, no, no. I wanna, <laughs> don't go to the chair, because the chair takes everything in a whole other, a whole other direction. Let me get these comments <laughs> in. Let me, let me play the preliminary video, and then I'm going to come back to the video with the chair. We got it all. We got it all. Nina, oh, yeah. uh, 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 Fakunle, Nina Fakunle, what's up, sis? She said, Thou who jumpeth shall get beateth down. <laughs> Thee who starteth nothing shall entereth into nothing. <laughs> Black Attations 24 7. Nina, you are. Ah. Nina, you are so silly. So. That's Nina's hood translation. <laughs> uh, uh, Kimberly Morgan talking about thou shall not knuck if you cannot buck. Lord have mercy. Ooh. This see, this is <laughs> this Ooh. the that's your fam. This is what we do here. Marlene Lee talking about the hat toss. Leon Campbell said, dude, let's do this. <laughs> Paul Briggs said Lynchburg, right where Pastor Tuck is from. Yes. Yeah, we, we now have learned that the inventor of the folding chair is a black man who is from Lynchburg, Virginia, where Pastor Tucker is sitting at right now. That's um, right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks to my son Corey Coleman, researcher. Uh, Kimberly, Mo research. Kimberly Morgan said it was said where the fight happened is the same area in Alabama where slaves were sold and housed in warehouses until so oh interesting. God. I don't know the accuracy, but some family and others were saying that interesting. Marlena Lee said, "Legend has it that Aquamane didn't actually know how to swim, but the spirit of the ancestors. Oh Lord, there we go, the ancestors oh carried Lord. him through the water. Since people." trying to rewrite black history this is my version hilarious uh, marlena that is hilarious yeah. I, I and i did say i did say say that, that the, the kid got amazing just amazing courage but uh, but he really i i wouldn't be surprised if it was that he he either can't swim or wasn't a good swimmer because the way he was beating the waves i was like i was like i said i said to myself that boy really wanted to get through that water because he was not a good said, swimmer i'm not missing out on this opportunity <laughs> I'm not missing out on this opportunity. I was excuse yeah. me for judging his stroke, but I was like, I said, hey, yeah. sir, listen. Hey, <laughs> hey you know, how, you know how they said free licks. My man, like, I'm not missing my, I'm not missing that my chance to get some free licks. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm in this one. That's why I say you can't control the young folks. You get these young folks riled, riled up. I'm telling you. Uh, Ashley Bailey said yo, yo, the yo, mighty yo, morphin brother. power Negroes. Hilarious. <laughs> Alexandria yeah, said, jokes aside, the man hitting that woman with the chair was unnecessary, so not sure why that's funny. Oh, no, that wasn't oh, funny. Oh, oh, it, no, oh, that was the oh, one part where Yunissa was looking at, she said, oh, yeah, he need to go to jail. She hey, said that. She said hey, just like that. Hey, I'm going to give y'all I'm 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 some more advantage on that. <laughs> See, because y'all catching the end of that video. Y'all don't know who that woman was. Okay, we that what's woman, up? That, that, woman was, that, was, that woman was not an innocent bystander. Okay. So just so right right now we're gonna play the video that we played a little bit of the video up top in the in the in the in the pre-show. So uh so we're gonna play that video now. And then like I said, in just a couple minutes, I got Dr. Terrence Well. But bef before we play that video, I got to do something else. Looking for promotional products in apparel? Look no further than PNB Promotionals. Place your brand and logo on just about anything with PNB Promotionals over 800,000 products. Hats, mugs, backpacks, bottles, cups, drinking glasses, lip balm, chewing gum, candy, and of course, t-shirts. PNB Promotionals is a nationally certified advertising institution. Log on to pbpromotionals.com and start your order now. pbpromotionals.com and get your order going and make sure you tell them that you heard about it on the I Can Tune Day show. Imprinting the best for less P and B promotionals. All right, family. This video that I'm about to play right now, this is the the a great, great context. This is the beginning of the brawl before it happened. And in the I don't even have to set it up. The the the, the young the young lady who is shooting the video and narrating it, she tells you exactly what's happening. Go ahead and roll that footage, Jaleel. That guy in the white shirt. 
is the crew from our little dinner cruise boat who got off our ship to go over there to move that black pontoon boat on his own because those guys who parked there were told not to leave it there and they left it there. So he's just pushing it off. That's funny. Took matters into his own hands. I love it. I hope the police give him a big old ticket. Ooh, confrontation with the owner of the boat. Was the lady that got hit with the chair. She was the first person down there. Okay. What's happening on Clubhouse? Facebook can't hear me, but let me tell Clubhouse what's going on. So, what's happening is you see the okay. Let me let me mute. The, so, so you see the, the security guard. He's pointing to the owner of the boat, asking this person not to uh, to, to move the boat and trying to explain it to this guy. And it's going. He's go, the guy's going back and forth with him, with him. The boat. The boat is actually blocking the point where the large. Uh, 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 dinner boat is supposed to be parked. So they clear, apparently, based on what they said in the video, they have were already told to move the boat. They did not move the boat, which is a whole nother issue. We'll come back to that right there. But they simply have a problem with taking order and instructions from this this guard. Clearly, all they had to do at this point was simply just move the boat. Now you see, if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, you, you see the guard clapping his hands again. Facebook, you can't hear me. Here we go. They go to hat. Now, here come the pack mentality. Here come the first brother to the rescue. Come back to me, Jaleel. And, and, and let me let me explain something to y'all. Uh, uh, again, I, that video has some language, and uh, uh, Facebook, y'all couldn't hear me. Clubhouse could, but listen, this is pure pack mentality. This is pure. It, it's 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 how people think when they feel like they are power in numbers, and and, and, and ain't, that ain't just no white folks situa situation right there. But th but that's it particularly here is this. What I have an issue with is the fact that all they had to do was take the instruction from the man. The man works for the boat company. He had the right to go over there and literally un uh, remove their 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 boat from the dock. 
but they didn't respect his position. They didn't respect. They didn't want to receive any information, any correction, any 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 di- direction from him. All right. So so I'm about to bring uh, uh, Doctor Wells in, but let me get Unissa and Pastor Tuck's immediate thought before we go to the second part of the video. Uh, Unissa, Pastor Tuck, your, your your thoughts. Go ahead, Unissa. Well, I was just reading um, uh, Dondrea Dondrea in um, Clubhouse. She said, just from a legal point. She still didn't deserve to be hit with the chair. She did. We need to pray for her in the name. This could result in a serious injury to her. And of course, which they all initiated. So I don't know what all means, but yeah, they all didn't initiate it. <laughs> the, um, the, the, the black people out there did not initiate it. The gentleman who was trying to do his job did not initiate it. The person who initiated it was um, the, uh, the people who owned the boat, the pontoon. Yeah. Who did not. Re- and then. The, the argument ensued clearly you could tell from the gestures of the the gentleman who was who was trying to get them to move their boat yeah that they were arguing back and forth with him as opposed to complying yeah and you can also see that i mean for obvious from the video that they initiated it because they Purely. attacked him first and then jumped on him so yeah. i'm not sure who all is but but yeah, you know, at the point that the woman got hit on top of the head with the chair she was sitting on the ground at that point so oh, she was, it, it was all, not it fighting was out of anymore control. Yeah, it was out of control. It was out yeah, of control. He, that yeah, because he had already hit. <laughs> he had already oh, hit yeah. one person he, he, with the he, chair. He was, he was, he just, was going and, around. Right. He was going around like he was making sure everybody was out. Oh, he, yeah. he was making sure you're not getting back in this. I'm making sure. He he was definitely out of control. Dude with the chair, he, he was he yeah. was out he was out of order. Yeah. yeah. He was not yeah. even defending himself. He was just he was just getting his in. He was he was in pure yeah. Benny Hinn prayer line mode. That joke was yeah. going just with the yeah. like back in yeah. the old school Benny Hinn was like with pow. The old, yeah, yeah. Not big that's exactly. Jacket, jacket. My Not man, chair, my man chair. was handing out chairs like he worked in stock room at IKEA. <laughs> I mean, you get a chair, you get a chair, and you get a chair. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like he was a trustee yeah, working in the fellowship hall. I mean, he was stacking chairs like that. I mean, that's exactly what he was doing. I my man it. did not care. It, it had nothing to do with the fight. My man was just like, oh, yeah. "I'm getting, I'm getting mine today." That was pent up anger and aggression. Let's let's it get was. let's get a clinical perspective on it. I want to bring to the conversation. We'll be again the second part of the show. We're talking about the sexuality of young black males and and what all the different variables that affects that, particularly today in this current culture. And we got a great uh, a guest to have this conversation. He is the author of the book Black Sunshine: A Guide for Raising Black Males into intelligent well-adjusted men in the 21st century and uh and he he i thought it was just so appropriate god knew what he was doing when we booked dr wells to come on the show today because we had no idea that this was going to happen and it's i think it's a great conversation to have about what's the clinic clinical standpoint of what happened of, of of what what took place over the weekend we walked to the show for the very first time and i'm sure it won't be the last dr terrence wells phd how you doing sir i'm doing great what about you we're good, sir. We're good. So, uh, welcome to the show. Very first time coming on. Well, thank you for having me. You know, I appreciate that you all took the time out to invite me in to share. Well, you know, Dr. Wells, again, let me give Pastor Tucker a huge shout out because uh, I was not aware of your book, even though you you actually uh, you live <laughs> in in my city and uh, in practice right down the road. So uh, had no idea. But Pastor Tuck uh, uh, was at his friend's house in Charlotte. And ran across your book. Was it was it on the, sitting on the coffee table, Pastor Tuck? Is that what it was? I was sitting on the dining room table when I walked in the house. Yeah, he called me. Pastor Tuck called me. He's like, "Yo, you got to read this book." He's I, like, "I really think we should have him on the show." And I was like, I, "And then so we we wound up getting on the phone with Doctor Wells that day, and wound up probably talking for about 45, 50 minutes. I don't know. And uh, I yeah. was like, "Yo, this brother really gets it in a in a unique way, particularly the experience of being a black man walk, walking this earth, and then to have written this book." And so I'm gonna come back to the book in just a little bit, but I want to I want to get your perspective, Doc, on what happened this weekend from a clinical standpoint. Okay, what 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 do you think took place? on that on that boat dock on all sides well i feel like the elephant in the room is basically what we saw was the denial of our humanity you know we we saw incidents where a man of color was denied the ability to perform his work duties you know they would not reason with them and they went forward to attack him and so i think that's the elephant in the room is the fact that he was denied his humanity and other people were enraged and they felt Mm -hmm. like they Take it anymore, and so that's one of the things that we really have to address 
in America, because right now things are beginning to bubble out of control. So. To, to your point on that, one of the things that concerned me as I was watching this video and then watching the, the, the huge response on social media, this thing is viral. It's been picked up by all the news networks. When Lester Holt got to address stuff like this, y'all know Lester don't want to be talking about no stuff like this right here. Lester had to address this thing on the news last night, and I was like, "Boy, this 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 is this is getting this thing is is is, is tracking is is has extended well past just a viral video on social media." And uh, but but I think that that what one of the the, the comments or thoughts that came that occurred to me was is that what's the ripple effects of this? What's the long term repercussions of this? What, what's your thoughts on, on on that, Doc? Do you think there's anything uh, that can extend past this? Any other outcomes, whether that be internal or community, external? Wh- what do you What do you think that those are? Well, let's go back to the origins of, um, of people of color in America. Of course, we were brought here against our um, own, you know, abilities. And of yes. course, we were exploited for over four hundred years, and so during that process, we were reduced down lower than the beast of the field. You know, yeah. we were treated inhumanely. Um, and so in many cases, animals were treated far better mm-hmm. than color in America. And so what we saw was pretty much the reflection of the perception of black people here in America, not among everyone, but of course, among a population of people. Right. So those are the things that has to be addressed because we have to begin to see the humanity in everyone. Right, um, right. When we begin to discuss black versus white, you know, um, I feel like it's far fetched for us still to even consider each other as being color code classified. You know, mm. look at culture, then we begin to look at culture. But when we say black and white, that lets you know there's a distinct difference between the individual. Are we talking about a biological construct or are we talking right. about a cultural construct? Right. And many times today, we're really talking about a biological construct. And that's how America has perceived those that were not white and wow. so we look at it from a, a realistic perspective and realize that there are still people in america who do not consider black people as being human okay yeah yeah so yeah not consider black people as being human and so that's an elephant in the room that we really have to address uh, many of them will deal with us cordially but in their hearts they really don't perceive us as being human beings and that's not everyone but that's of course a, right the population of people that still exist within America. Uh, that's that, that's a good point. Uh, in just a little bit, I wanna I wanna I wanna read some comments on Facebook. So, uh, Unissa and Pastor Tuck, if y'all could look yeah. at some of the comments on Facebook. I was getting ready to say that, that, that there's, there are a couple on there. Yeah. That uh. That, that, that the women would definitely want to get those in and, and uh, y'all can check YouTube as well um, again we're talking about it uh, we got a great clinical perspective on this from Dr. Terrence Wells what went down last this past weekend on the Alabama boat docks of course I want to play this second video I want to play this second video this second video I think really really kind of everywhere where the aggression and the and, and the the visceral response to the whole thing really began to scale. And I don't I, I don't, I'm, I've never I don't know what page this was or who who edited this video, but this video was so helpful to me because it was so many videos out there that just were bad or had too much talking in it, too many people in it. And I was like, okay, this, but it was perfect. This video right here. So run that second that second clip, Jaleel, that has a longer that that much longer video. Yep, they go Aquaman. Aquaman. You know how mad you got to be to swim across, to be black and hop in the water like that. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real. I'm just <laughs> with his Tim's on. Well, yeah. And also, I would like to interject right here, if possible. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Of course, from a neuroscience perspective, of course, we have the fight and flight response, right? Yeah. Right. During the fight response, a person has a, they operate more out of their amygdala, which is the point of going to have So during that time, the person is secreting more than enough you know, testosterone onto adrenaline. Right. Adrenaline testosterone is big form of the two cortex. Which is for reason, hold, hold on, Doc. I want I, I, I want to hear. I want to make sure I hear that clearly because that is such great context, and and you can see exactly. So I'm gonna let Doc explain more what's happening, what he's talking about. But if, if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, what's happening right now? This is when the young guys after the boat has docked. The, the some a group of young guys walk up and they approach the boat owners who blocked the the, the, the the dock and started all of it. And this is when the melee really goes crazy. Everything runs totally uh, amok here. This is when it all kind of really happens. And you have people not t- dis- not taking consideration of, they don't care whether you're a male or female, everybody getting it right here. I will say it's balanced. That's a woman jumping on the lady. So that is that is some balance there. That is, that is some, some basic uh, social order there. Uh, but that runs, of course, out in just a few minutes. Again, Clubhouse, y'all can't see this. If you can, you can hop over on Facebook or YouTube and watch it. Boy. All right. We'll come back to the video from here, uh, you know. But the reason why I wanted to play that video because, you know, it really showed the escalation. And, Doc, you you, you nailed it. Go ahead and jump right into what you were saying when the video was playing. I'm coming, we come to y'all comments, Facebook, Clubhouse, and YouTube. Go ahead, sir. Okay, from a neuroscience perspective, of course, you're all aware of the fight and flight response, okay? Yes, sir. And so the fight and flight response, if a person chooses to fight or flight, they have a, a great amount of, of, of adrenaline and cortisol that's pretty much excreted in the, in, in the brain. And so what happens is, you know, that comes more, more so from the, from the adrenal glands and also from your amygdala. Whenever a person has experienced a lot of stress and duress or adrenaline, it disarms their prefrontal cortex, which is responsible mm. for cognitive function, is high order of thinking and reasoning. So at that point in time, the person will revert back to their more animalistic primal mind versus mm-hmm. their reasonable, rational mind. And so that's the thing that's most dangerous when you're dealing with people in a mob complex, because, of course, they're out of their minds. You know, even when we saw the, uh, the gentleman that seemed to be, a, you know, very reserved, that had mm-hmm. that plastic, I would say it was a plastic chair. I thank God it wasn't a metal chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jesus. So you could tell at that point in time, you know, that his critical thinking and his rationale was not there. Okay. No, sir. Nope. He was fighting flight. He was under duress and he was not thinking critically nor reasonably. And yeah. so we have to be aware of those type of neurological changes that occur in the brain. And so again, during fight and flight, you know, your prefrontal cortex is disarmed. And so we have to understand that uh, that your your mind is connected to your body. And there are neurological changes that happen during stress or trauma. Mm. And that, that brother with that chair, I, I think that was an example of what happens. He, that they they on that dock, they got whatever happened on his job last week, whatever happened at their house the weekend. I don't know if he had a, 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 a argument with his wife or he was he was upset with his kids. All of that spilled out, and he, when he was swinging that chair, that was pure good old fashioned rage right there he was highly upset and then you talk about doc you mentioned it so and it, it makes total sense we talk about c- critical thinking he did not take into consideration that that was a woman on, sitting on the ground <laughs> who was seated now pastor Tuck, i know you said she was wilding out earlier but she was seated and she was a female he gave it to her i was like god dog sir <laughs> but, you, but you know another thing to think about too that that was an older guy i'm not sure exactly how old he was oh yeah but that but that might have been a guy that that's got some ptsd from from civil rights era yeah think yeah. about think think about the hoses and all that and all he saw was a crowd of white folks acting crazy and my man was like, I ain't going back out like this again. Yeah, yeah. It's y'all. Because uh Loretta Sass said this. She said the man with the chair was scared. He was surrounded by an angry mob and he was hitting everyone. He even hit a black guy who was trying to defend others. 
this older man I think was acting out of fear. Wow. Wow. Which goes exactly with what Doc was saying. He 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 wasn't he wasn't thinking at all. He was just hitting somebody. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, of course, um, when we look at anger, we saw anger and rage, but of course, anger and rage is a secondary emotion. What typically comes before that is fear, frustration, you know, resentment. Those are the type of undertones that occur whenever a person is in rage. And so, yeah. um, when we look at it from a neuro neurological perspective, we realize that there are a lot of things that can occur during that process. Wow. Y'all, let's we're going to take a break. We're going to get some more promos in right now, pay these bills. And listen, y'all, if y'all want to get y'all ads on, I can tune in. So you can call that lady right there on screen right next to me. Call her. She, she can hook you right on up. 803-738-6604. That's 803-738-6604. And get your ads on the I can tune in show as we are expanding, y'all. We are in a, in, a, in a time and a season of great growth. And we appreciate y'all support. Thank y'all for supporting this morning. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for watching. Don't y'all move. This is the I can tune in show. We'll be right back. Greetings, I am Darrell Presley, owner and operator of Presley Cares Mortuary Services of West Columbia, South Carolina. Our mission here at Presley's is to provide excellent, quality, superior funeral service to all, regardless of economic status, religion, or race. With our society being embedded with a diverse class of people, our staff here at Presley's pledges to offer only one class of service, and that is superior. So rendering professional services to the families that call upon us is not an option, it's mandatory. Presley Cares Mortuary Services, where we are caring for you and your loved ones. Looking for promotional products and apparel? Look no further than P&B Promotionals. Place your brand and logo on just about anything with P&B Promotionals over 800,000 products. Caps, travel mugs, drawstring bags, water bottles, stadium cups, umbrellas, tote bags, and t-shirts. P&B Promotionals is a nationally certified advertising company. Log on to pbpromotionals.com and start your order now. pbpromotionals.com Imprinting the best for less. It's the Day Show. Say what? Say what? You heard what I said. That's right, y'all. The, the, the Day Show. Smell it. A-K-I-N, uh, 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 Day. Oh, uh, yeah. Happy Tuesday, y'all. Happy Tuesday, family. Coming up Thursday. Now, I, what I what I plan on talking about Thursday, I'm not sure because I, I don't I don't know if we're gonna get to all of Dr. Wells' talk conversation I want to have with him about his book, Black Sunshine. Black Sunshine is the book by Dr. Terrence Wells. You can order. Well, I'm gonna I'm let Doc tell you where you can get this book right now because when we when we find out about the book, Pastor Tucker immediately ordered three four copies and sent me one of them, and uh, I'm so glad he did so. Um, but uh, we're going to continue this conversation. I'm going to get some of the comments over here on, on, on uh, Clubhouse and uh, Facebook and YouTube. Like I said, if y'all can watch and ch check the comments over there as well. Um, again, come on back. Bring everybody back on screen, Tristan. Um, the, uh, let's bring all four folks up. Um, this is a good conversation. Again, who knew? Who knew, y'all, that uh, Dr. Wells would be on today when we booked him that this was going to happen? And uh, one thing, Doc, I want to talk about, and I and and because I'm here's one 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 area where I think we need to be concerned of. <sighs> as much there's some there's some parts of this video that's hilarious. Okay, there's some parts of this video that it is. I'm just gonna it, it, get it, say it. I, I don't care if any sponsors don't like it, and please, all of my white friends and 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 and, and brethren, colleagues, what have you, uh, please understand this. Uh, there was a part of this that as a black man that was satisfying and I'm just going to keep it real and that's and that may be hard to understand for some people and that may not be PC politically correct to say that may not be something that uh, some sponsors want to hear but I'm just giving you straight facts when you see something happen when you see someone attack like that that was uncalled for and that type of stuff happens all the time like I said the difference is here is there was no, there's usually not cameras around. 
But what but 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 as folks are celebrating, and there's a funny video that I'm gonna play in just a little bit, because it is funny, where somebody <laughs> reenacted the video, it's just ignorant. Okay, it's, but it is funny. Yes. But so <laughs> but before I play that, I do have a concern about the celebratory attitude that we have it on social media. Because my concern, Doc, and I want you to jump in on here, is I think that there I think that what what happened on this weekend is what every police officer is afraid of who encounters black people in an aggressive way. They are afraid of getting in a in a one on one fist to cuff exchange or, or or getting on the ground with anybody. That that was my rule. I, I never forget I was fighting this dude. He had some very long arms, and I was just like, I just got to get him on the ground because he he because if because I stand toe to toe, he gonna knock me out. But if I can get this joke on the ground, I can get it, and that's what happened. But but I had to take a few licks to get him on the ground, and I think that's what a lot of police officers are afraid of. If if, if you ever get one on one with these people, <laughs> this is what happens. Am I right about that, Doc? And 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 and, am, and, and is my concern that there are some longer term or, or extended ripple effects that could come out of this to to innocent people who had who do are no way involved in this who are just going about their business, who may be accosted or assaulted by somebody who watches this video and gets upset. Is there any validity to my thoughts or my emotion concerning that? Doc, go ahead. I would say so. Um, there's a lot of what we call intergenerational trauma, okay? And of course, according to epigenetics, trauma is passed on intergenerationally, which means the traumatic experiences that the mother felt, it could be then passed on through the womb to the child and so forth. Or mm -hmm. the father experiences, it can be passed on intergenerationally, genetically to the to the offspring. Wow. So there was a, a, a pretty much a, a deal of um, of ratification for a lot of people that is looking on the surface. But what I see was a lot of pain. Um, also, as you start looking at the what we call the they call the superhumanization of African Americans. Okay? Mm. We also have to look at the reality that we were a product of selective breeding. All right. Since mm. 1908, whenever they stopped the transatlantic tr slave trade, they cut down all transport of slaves or Africans that were enslaved. OK, let me correct. That. Wow. Wow. That were enslaved. So from then, from 1908, they had to begin to to ramp up breeding farms. And of course, Virginia was one of the places where they that was notorious for breeding. And so wow. black were, were expected to have at least. 2.5 kids, I mean, one kid every 2.5 years. And in some instances, you know, females or Af women of African descent were promised their freedom if they had 14 to 15 children. And so with that kind of selective breeding, you will have offspring that may have a genetic advantage. All right. And so right. you look at the NFL, the NBA. And so those are the dominant culture. They are aware of these undercommons. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. The that, you know, that not only were we genetically superior in the beginning, but also we were a product of selective breeding that mm. made us even more of an edge physically. And so those type of things have to be addressed. With my sons now, I have um, a 17-year-old. He's 6'3", 225 pounds, okay? Wow. Now, my, um, my baby boy, he's probably 5'10", 5'11". He's probably about 175, 180 pounds. How old is he? He, he's 14 years old. Wow. And yeah. Someone that's not in the dominant culture, this Caucasian, when they view my son and they see my sons, they don't see boys. They see men. Right. And it happened with Trayvon Martin. Right. We saw a boy, but someone of another culture, they see a man that could, you know, perhaps hurt them. Right. Or provide them harm. And so that's one of the reasons why we have to do a great job in terms of educating and training our, our, our young men. Okay especially at this stage of development. So I digress, right. uh, you know, so I, I want to fall back because I don't want to get too much into my soapbox. And talk no, no, no. No, that's good. That's you're right on that. That's good. No, that, you're right on. That's good. Great perspective. I'm gonna read some of the comments, and I'm gonna come back to that, to that topic of the conversation. Then we're gonna bend this conversation into uh, the the uh, t just two chapters out of this great book, Black Sunshine, by Dr. Terrence Wells. And Doc, um, tell them real quick because I, I I don't want to assume that anybody's gonna be with us the entire show, so I don't wait to the end. 
to uh, to tell folks how they can get uh, uh, get their hands on this book. Again, Black Sunshine, a guide for raising black males into intelligent, well-adjusted men in the 21st century. I would I highly recommend this book, particularly if you are raising uh, young black boys at whatever age, or or if you have a young adult children. Doc, go ahead tell us tell us briefly about the book and where they can find it, sir. Well, Black Sunshine is a, is a manual for developing African-American men into well-adjusted young males, young men. Um, it can be found on Amazon, Books A Million, or even um, Barnes & Nobles. And so one of the things that inspired me to, um, to write this book was that, you know, I've experienced so much and also I have so much knowledge within this discipline because I devoted myself towards um, specializing, you know, in work with African-American males. Um, mm. I have six years of clinical experience specifically working with this demographic. And there's a lot, there's a lot of things that, that's going on right now. Right. And to a certain degree, this book was my duty to educate, to empower, and also my duty to warn. Right. You know, our ethical responsibility to warn about some of the things that's going on. And so um, I get tired of seeing some of the same things occurring within our community over and over again without any kind of, you know, uh, resolve or what, without any kind of plan. Right. And so, this was my my way of making an offering to try to to help our people, try to make a, a valuable contribution to the culture. It's much needed right now. You know, yeah. the only thing we have to do is turn on the television set. The only thing we have to do is walk down the street. You know, and so again, um, this is my humble offering. Um, I poured a lot into it. Mm -hmm. um, I dealt with development on many different stages, from zero to childhood to adolescence to young adulthood. Yeah. All right. Anything that's, that that an African American male will need to survive in America or to thrive in America is in that book. Wow. So yeah. With sexuality, economic empowerment. We're dealing with financial literacy. We're dealing with self-esteem, self-concept, sexuality. We're dealing with everything that you're going to deal with is in there. Not yeah. only yeah. from a problem perspective, but also we, we, we garner real life solutions um, that can be used in order to empower our community. And, you know, I'm looking at a couple of the chapters here again, a uh, phenomenal book. Well, well written, uh, very clear. Uh, I think I think it articulates the, the black male experience uh, in America in a, a very unique way. I, Doc, I encourage you to 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 do a part two. And I, maybe you are on the, the, the grown man experience, you know, that that probably that 30 plus experience, you know, on up to, to 60 because it's so it's so layered and and and. and uh, and I think a lot of people don't understand kind of what this experience is. Some of the stuff you referenced earlier uh, about the breeding farms and, and and how we were, how we have been treated in this country racially and socially. Uh, it, it, it's it, people don't realize what the ripple effects are, are, are of that relationships is one of the, the chapters here. Police etiquette. Listen, it, listen, it's, it's, it's three chapters. I think that you need to buy this book for. If you don't buy it for nothing else, you need to buy it for the at the chapter on sexuality and you need to buy it for the chapter on rap poison, which we're going to talk about that. Both of those in just a little bit and police etiquette. I don't think we do enough preparation on out with our young men as in regards to police etiquette in America, how you properly interact. And I think there's, there's several layers there. But um, I, I think if y'all don't get it for nothing else, get it for those three chapters right there. It enrich your life as a black mother. If you're raising a black son, you definitely need to have this book because there's some things that you simply do not understand as a black woman. And, and, and mm -hmm. when you when you interact in the raising a son, it doesn't make you less than it doesn't mean that you are deficient in any way as a mother. There's some stuff that you simply do not understand. That lady standing sitting next to me on my left side on the screen. I, she's me and her and I've had many conversations, deep ones, angry ones, frustrated ones, where I simply say you do not understand what I'm what, what I'm experiencing. And she and she had to take that. So so and I think this is a great book. This is a great companion piece to the word of God and some other manuals that are out there. Black Sunshine, a, a, a guide for raising black males into intelligent, well-adjusted black men in the 21st century. Let me come to the comments, and then I'm going to let uh, Eunice and Pastor Tuck jump in here because uh, we, because a lot, it's a lot of conversation that's going on here. Y'all on fire in these comments. Um, I'm gonna start to the bottom and, and, and go up. Y'all, y'all, let me know if I'm missing something here because it's, it's so many comments over here on Clubhouse. Y'all know Clubhouse is, is the, where the most action happens in the comments. Well, before you start, I wanted to. Yes. Uh, yes. Um. So, um, Dondrea, um, uh, Dondrea, uh, just 
to your point about Dr. Wells, uh, she said, I'm just from a legal point. Um, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong point. Because yeah, what happened, the I'm comments sorry. are jumping. She said, right. She said, thank you for your clinical explanation, Doc. It explains a lot. We need you to commentate on CNN, et cetera. Thanks for the speaking <laughs> points. And yes, PTSD also makes sense. Yeah. So um, I just thought that was uh, really good. Appropriate. Um, you know, that there's another perspective that needs to be talked about. Yeah. I am Londa Nicole said, I was forced to understand because I'm raising three black men on my own. Wow. Leon Campbell said, good teaching, Doc. When we were pulled over by the sheriff on the way to church, I showed my teenage sons how to interact properly with the officer and to let him know I was getting the info he requested and didn't make sudden movements and also was laughing with the sheriff. Wow. And, and you know what? And, 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 and I've told I've told I've said this to, to my wife and said to my sons, I've said to a lot of other people, when you get pulled over as a black man, your preparation and approach to that interaction is different than anybody else, even a black female. And, and I will say this now today, you know, you see black women get assaulted and, and, and have terrible things happen to them the same way. But it but because of the fear factor that is there that it, that is in that is rooted and grounded in many people when they interact with black men you have to approach it you have to think all of that stuff through when anybody you you interact with the police and nobody else has to do that no other culture has to do that no other race has to do that uh anita funkunle said agreed dondria the psychological effects of the ma many forms of, of repression on black people are being purposefully ignored attention needs to be placed on this issue but if they do the truth will get out at this point this is some form of reverse stockholm syndrome Wow. I hear you, uh, Nina. Uh, Dondria, Don, uh, Dondria, Dondria said they fear us and superhumanize us, yet they are they're the ones primarily approaching, targeting, challenging and attacking us like yesterday. Yeah. And I think that was on great display on, 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 over this weekend. Again, you, you don't have to like what somebody says, but you don't get to put your, the right have the right to put your hands on them. Sure. So and, and so here here, here it is this brother is telling them, hey, move your boat. I didn't told y'all to move the boat. Y'all had to move the boat. You, he can say it however you want to say it. We don't we grown people can't control other grown people. And then but there was a conscious decision made that as opposed to me following your direction, I'm going to challenge your authority. And then there was a second conscious decision made when I did not when I do not like your stance, what you saying to me, I'm going to further disrespect you and I'm going to attack you. And the people around him didn't say to him, no, 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 son. Oh, no, no. Whoever that was. Don't don't do that. That's not right. It was no. We're going to aggress, too. And that's why the consequences and repercussions, I believe, was so stark. Go ahead, Pastor. To, to be clear, I, I believe what happened, in, just looking at the different videos, that he basically had already asked them to move, and they hadn't moved. And so he took it upon himself to untie the boat and move it so that they could come on in. Right. And then the dude had a problem with the fact, you touched my boat. Mm. And so he's sitting there explaining to him, you can't park here. He's showing them where, where the places are marked. Because you can see him, he continue to point at different places on the dock, like right. telling them, right. this is a no parking zone. This is where this boat has to be. This is not for you to park here. Right. And so at this point, you saw him, he kept pointing, like he's continually trying to explain this to you. And dude is continuing to going back and forth about it. And dude is, and dude is like kind of going back and forth, almost like, well, you don't have a right to move my stuff. Look, this, this is my job. Right. This is what I'm doing. Right. This kind of kept going on like this and that. And then another one of the guys in the party came out of nowhere and cold cocked him. Right, 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 right. And that's the and and and, and I guarantee I don't know for sure, but the, the guy who cold cocked him seems to be somebody who was younger. And yeah. and, and, and and that's what I'm saying about that youth. You gotta really educate your young young men on protocol of all of all races how to respect yep. order what 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 the, the the normal constructs of society how we interact with each other even when we are in disagreement there's some basic norms and values that most people understand now that's not to say that it, in, in times past that there wasn't all kind of aggressive behavior clearly it was as I said up top it, it was happening it just wasn't no video cameras around again no. this type of stuff this type of stuff happens today and it used to happen in spades 
years and decades ago on on the side of roads or or, or in public places or in private places. Oh, yeah. So yeah. so again, like I said, just wasn't no cameras around in in, in this situation. We, we, I'm gonna I'm read a few more comments, then we are gonna transition to this comp because I want to make sure we have some some time in, in the show. Again, we originally brought Doc to talk talk about here was the sexuality of young men, and uh, and I hope I'm saying that right, phrasing that properly. But yeah. how you address it, how you consider it as you uh, 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 are raising young African American men, and particularly not just African American men. I think this applies to everybody. But I will say this: that top that that chapter on rat poison. I need to make sure y'all hear this from a clinical perspective. Y'all know we talk about that on this show a lot: the effects of media, arts, entertainment, and the culture, and what the long term ramifications are to on your uh, development into adulthood. But what Dr. Wells has clinically articulated in this book, I think, is a perfect illustration of what many of us say in the barbershop with our family, friends, co-workers, et cetera, on a consistent basis. So, but And I want to correct you on one thing. I, yes, sir. I didn't, buy th- I didn't go out and buy three copies. I bought 15 copies of this book. Wow. And I just want to let people know how, how important this book is. I bought it for just about all of my brothers and all of my sons in ministry, anybody who I know that has interaction with young men, because when I read this book, that's how powerful I thought this book was. So wow. I'm just telling you, that's, that's the endorsement I have of this book. I'm just let, I'm letting everybody know how, how critical I thought this book was to the body of Christ, to anybody who's having impact on young men. So I just want to say that. Well, so, let, let me give you, you let me give you one. Else. Hold on, let me give you one. Daily I shall. I got, I got to give you one for that right there. Uh, and, 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 and what happened was, Pastor Tuck called me. He had just begun reading it. And he was like, yo, this book. And he started talking about the book. And then I think you read it. You read it over, you know, over, yeah, over a I, few I read, days. It, it, took, it, took, it took me probably about two, three days. And it probably wouldn't have taken me that long. But I was on, I was on vacation and I was being interrupted by different things. But I'm telling you, that, that the book is that powerful. And uh, and also just wanted to make note, our, 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 our brother and co-host Jason Earls is watching with us on Facebook. Jason Earls in the house? Yeah. Jay Earls in the building. Pastor Earls in the building. What's up, sir? Yeah. We got we got to let Jason come on. Come, or not let Jason. When Jason is back, he's ready to come back. Uh, he's been dealing with some stuff. I'm like, I, we'll let him give his truth, give his testimony when he comes back on the show. But uh, glad to have Pastor Earls in the building and uh, uh, the entire Earls family. Uh, we, we love y'all, appreciate y'all, and thank y'all, and glad that y'all are here. Um, let me get some more comments. Y'all check Facebook to make sure it's not any more comments over there that we need to make sure we get in before we transition. Uh, again, we're talking about the Alabama boat dot brawl, um, uh, or, or the, or as I humorously said yesterday on on the praise party show, the Alabama Black History uh, uh, brawl on yesterday. <laughs> Again, I'm just cutting up. But it was, you know, I think it was one of those moments that I think in culture it was significant. Again, the 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 value of you can make these cell phones, cameras, it's cameras everywhere today. Everywhere. In, in most instances right now, it's only a handful of people in this room working, but it's probably 20 cameras between everybody. So, I, you know, I fully uh, 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 am uh, 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 appreciative of the fact that we have those cameras. I don't know who is blowing the parking lot right now. Is that who's blowing the parking lot? Uh, face, face, <laughs> face, Facebook is censoring our comments. Really? Oh, oh, yes, they are. Wow. You know, Facebook and it's crazy because and, and it's crazy because the comments weren't bad. I, I, I saw a couple that I wanted to read and it's like they gone. They said they, they've hidden them because it might include sensitive content. Because I know, wow. that, uh, I know, brother Rudy had said something about the fact that he said he didn't know why, uh, and I'm and I'm I don't want to misquote him, but he said something about he doesn't know why people are making a big deal about this as far as white and black. He said if this was just a group of people that got jumped, and he said and this is why the media is pushing this mm-hmm. to make this even a more divisive issue. He said if this was just somebody who got jumped, would they have just been pushing it like this? Yeah. And once again, because that's one of the things that the media does. Wow, and I'm looking. I'm looking here to your point about Facebook. Uh, when I go on my phone and pull Facebook up, it says violent or graphic content. This video is covered, so please, people can choose whether they want to see it. Learn more. So, I, and I didn't even know that he has shifted uh, uh, to that. So, yeah, uh, yeah, Facebook will um, uh, 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 censor you. And just uh, to give some context, yes. Um, um, so, Rudy, um, on That's your Mrs. brother the comments. Uh, Rudolph um, V. Mitchell, he's a retired police officer. So he policed in um, the, uh, I want to say. Atlanta. In Atlanta, Atlanta. Georgia. But I want to yep. say he was, um, and he could correct me in the, in the comments, but I want to say he was in the um, 
a special unit mm-hmm. that dealt mm-hmm. with specific types of crime in Atlanta. Yeah. So more the high risk, you know, that involved gangs and, and dr- drug dealers and things of that sort. And so yeah. he saw a lot. Um, it's actually been shot. He didn't tell us till later. Mm-hmm. It's been shot a couple of times. Um, but uh, so his perspective in terms of the, you know, the race issue being pushed, the narrative rather, yeah. being pushed by the media, um, you know, I, I don't know. He, 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 he has a, he is a different, he's a black man. Yeah. With a black, you know, mm-hmm. with two black sons. Yep. But, you know, he also has that law enforcement side too. So I yeah. definitely would like to see more. Um, hear more of his perspective. But one thing um, I see Loretta Sass said, she said, Dr. Um, Terrence makes a point. People don't see their eyes. They see with their hearts. Um, those, She said, those white people on the pontoon boat saw a black man and felt they didn't need to respect him. In their hearts, he, he was of no value. Right. And it says the black folks saw all the beatings they have seen over the years and they were traumatized. Right. Right. That was that was a visceral response. That was an emotional response. That sure. was, oh, no, this ain't happening right here. We're going to deal with that. And uh, that I mean, again, you talk about uh, uh, again, uh, he, his, his nickname for me forever is going to be Aquaman. That 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 16 year old young brother jumped in that water and swam over there. That wasn't no pool water. That was river water. That was choppy water. That's that's the water with the undercurrent. People drown in water like that. He swam across that water wasn't no skill for swimmer hopped up on that deck and kicked that shoe off and went to work and 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 it that's you that that's that's passion that's like oh no we can we ain't about to sit here and watch this happen today rudy did have one 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 other quick point rudy said that uh he was trading in all his guns for chairs <laughs> i can't i cannot <laughs> Daily I that's rudy that's rudy that's Rudy. i cannot <laughs> That's Rudy all day right there. Let's get some more of his comments. Uh, Nina said, uh, OMG, we can't even talk about experiences that affect us. This is straight evidence and exhibit A. No one is glorifying this behavior. We're sharing sentiments to purpose change. Okay, somebody thought that we, we glorify this behavior. Um, let, let, if you find that comment, let, let's, let's address that. Um, uh, let, me, let me go up and come down. Let me go up. Uh, Kimberly Morgan said, my family is a law enforcement family, and I know a lot of, of of throughout the state. However, when I'm pulled over, I still follow protocol. There it is. Leon Campbell said, I got pulled over years earlier at night by the police after being a part being part of a focus group study for the truth Trump slash Hillary Clinton debate and had to do the same thing so I could come home safely. Wow. That's a, a, a Trump slash Hillary Clinton debate focus group. That, you, that's interesting. You got to talk about that at some point, Brother Leon. Kimberly Morgan said, prime example of, of how some white people feel they are the superior being and show no respect. Yeah, that's exactly what that was. Leon Campbell also said, it's not like they didn't see he had an actual uniform on or that he proved he was who he said he was. Clearly. Exquisite Taste Network said, what is the name of the book again? Great question. Black Sunshine. Sun S-O-N. Yes. Uh, and it's, it is a guide for raising black males into intelligent, well-adjusted men in the 21st century. This by Dr. Terrence Wells, Ph.D. And again, it's available on Amazon, Books a Million, and you can go on Dr. Wells' website. I'm, I'm going to let you uh, get, let Dr. Wells give his website, too, in just a little bit, because he also uh, is a counselor, he's a licensed uh, a, a clinician. So you, and I, did I say that right, Doc? A, a licensed counselor clinician? Oh, okay. Licensed counselor. Say it one more time, Doc. Cut your audio off. Licensed professional counselor. Amen. All right. So, so again, y'all can if you need some help, you need somebody to talk to. Do you do virtual? You do? Do you do virtual sessions, Doc? Yes, I do. Praise the Lord. You see, so you'll be talking to Doc just like he's sitting there right, right there. That's the same, the same room he's sitting in right there. You'll be talking t- directly to him. Um, I might, I might uh, get Doc number. And, uh, do, do you do grown men? Because uh, sometimes you just make me mad. I might need somebody to talk to. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cut up. I'm cut up. I'm not. You can't. You can't help him. Doc. You can't help him. Doc. Daily I shine. <laughs> All right. This is this is the last few comments you're gonna read about this. Then we have to transition. Um. Uh. Okay, Paul Briggs said, read a oh, reason number seven thousand two eight six why I dropped Facebook hilarious. <laughs> 
Hey, be, be careful talking about Master Mark. Master Mark will cut you off now. Um, hey, I told you, we <laughs> bought our own plantation. There it is. My church channel all day, baby. Uh, let's go up here. Um, okay, listen, I saw, I'll read some more comments. I want to make sure we got enough uh, space to talk about uh, Dr. Wells' book. And I want to talk about these two particular chapters. Listen, y'all, when we come right back, we got to, uh, we're going to continue this conversation. Uh, we are blessed to have the kickoff of Healthy Laughter Season coming up next month in September. Marcus D. Wilder will be our special guest for first Sundays in September. And that is the official kickoff of Healthy Laughter. That special is our, uh, that's, that's right, special Healthy Laughter edition of first Sundays. And, of course, we will be filming a television special slash series here. Super excited about that. We tell you more, got more information about that. And uh, there's just a lot. Thank you to all of our sponsors. I'll read some of those in just a little bit. But don't y'all move. We got, we're going to continue this conversation. Dr. Terrence Wells, I guess his book is Black Sunshine, a guide for raising black males into the intelligent, well-adjusted men in the 21st century. All right, family, stay right there. Don't y'all move. This is Dr. Tune Show. At my church, we help people get better by teaching them how the word works. And we want to make sure there is no excuse not to get the word. It's our goal to make all of our ministries accessible on every smartphone, tablet, PC, and television connected to the internet. So whether you're a man who needs some wisdom, a woman who needs some encouragement, or a couple who needs guidance, the My Church channel has just what you need. Simply search for the My Church channel on Roku, Fire Stick, or Apple TV, or visit MyChurchChannel.org. You can also download the My Church On The Go app from Apple, or Google Play App Store. Constantly on the move? Check out the Word at My Church podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Or simply download the Word at My Church skill on your Alexa-enabled device. But whatever you do, make sure to stay connected. See you soon. My name is Dr. Damon Daniels with Pathways to Wellness, a division of Wellspring Family Medicine. We're excited to be partnering with the Healthy Laughter Comedy Series. Our vision at Wellspring Family Medicine is to bring you the most up-to-date, cutting-edge medical tests to help you optimize your health. For instance, we have a pain-free, simple tool that takes 20 minutes to help you understand your heart disease risk. In addition, We'll be offering online courses to help you manage your diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol better. So connect with us on Facebook at Wellspring Family Medicine to take advantage of all the offerings we'll have to help you live a healthier, happier life. It's the Akin Tune Day Show. Say what? Say what? You heard what I said? That's right, y'all. The, the, the Akin Tune Day Show. Smell it. A K I N uh, 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 Tune Day. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, y'all. Black Sunshine. That's the book. Today, we're talking about it. We were talking with the, the author of the book, Dr. Terrence Wells. And uh, one thing I want to get into here, I want to make sure we have time to discuss this. Again, Dr. Wells was so gracious to help us and parse and, and break down this video that's out there. I'm still going to play one more comical clip of the reenactment video, which is hilarious. Which is hilarious. I have to say that. But I want Dr. Wells to talk about uh, and discuss uh, this two particular chapters in this book that I think we may not be fully aware of just how detrimental ignoring this part of your child's development can be sexuality uh of, of young black men and and i and i'll say this right here as i was reading the chapter and it was talking you were talking about how how oftentimes particularly if parents don't communicate what our sexual uh character mindset should be in a healthy in, in a healthy well-adjusted man a lot of times you take cues and you take the norms and values of your community and society, even your family. And if, if you're getting cues from men who feel is, I'm telling you something, hey, hey, it's a poor fox got one hole to crawl in. I'm telling you, get all you can and can all you get. You know, if you if you're around people who saying stuff to you like that, you know, you can you can make a you can create a lot of sexual bad habits 
as a as a as a grown adult male. And Doc, I want to get into that because I thought that was you know you talk about it however you want to approach it because um, it's your book, it's your chapter, but it really blessed me. But I, that really jumped out at me. Because I don't think we, we, we are aware of just how much we create uh, the minds, these particular mindset in young children from very early age. Definitely. Um, of course, when you talk about when we start talking about sexuality, we have to realize that sexuality or sex is a basic psychological need according to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. In other words, um, none of us would have even been here if it not worked for sex. But we have a tendency to shy away from the topic. And so that tends to get us in a lot of trouble. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, I think that uh, uh, when you really talk about uh, the the how how we sexualize and how we shape today, do you think there's a big difference today in how young men are sexualized versus the way we were sexualized 20, 30 years ago? I'm coming to you next, Pastor. Oh, most definitely. Um, and when we look at sexuality, we have to not only look at beliefs, but also perceptions and practices, you know? So a lot of times we don't look at the beliefs nor the perceptions or practices that go in with sexuality. And so as we look at it right now today, we're on a downward trajectory, you know, in terms mm. of our black family systems, okay? About 76% of African-American children are being born in single family households. And that's not a moral issue. I believe that's more of a socioeconomic issue and more so a lack of being trained. Um, there's so much information that um, that I wish I would have had had exposure to, had access to whenever I was developing, because I made a lot of mistakes, you know, and not saying that having a child was a mistake, but I myself as a teenage teenage father. I had my first son at 19 years old. He's now mm. 29 years old. He's in the military. He's doing great, you know, but I went through a lot and I, I so wished that I had someone to talk to me about my sexuality, you know. Right. Um, so I was limited to peers i was limited to you know uh, media i mm -hmm. was limited to, you know uh, negative adults that were basically programming us and telling us what is, is acceptable and how we should approach sex and so um so when we look at sexuality you know it's it's taboo in many communities right and one of the things that stood out to me was that upon my research you know biologically the mind of an adolescence, the, the, the genitalia will mature much, much faster than their mind. Yeah. So that, put, that puts you in a bad situation whenever, you know, testosterone increased 30 fold, 30 times between the ages of 11 and 12. All right. And so at that, that point in time that that child begins to, or that adolescent begins to think about sex. Wow. About sex, have these feelings, but yet their mind is not equipped to make sound decisions and so that gets us in a lot of trouble you know that really does and, and we have to begin to have this kind of discussion with our young kings our young men right you know so we can develop them so we can cultivate them so they can make wiser decisions you you, you mentioned something you, you mentioned having a child at 19. what what would you say were some of the either cultural environmental familial uh, uh factors that led up to you making that decision uh to to, to engage in, in sex and how did you handle it once you had a, a son at such a young age well to rewind the tape just a little bit you know um you know i'm not a you know opposed to some self-disclosure but i myself was molested by a female at the age of eight years old and that was my first wow I guess you could say uh, interaction or a first experience with sex. And so I didn't realize until I became clinical that this indeed affected me because after that, you know, I began to have a different perspective of sexuality. And so mm. throughout my adolescence, you know, my perspective and my vantage point was I just got a shot of tail at an early age. I didn't look yeah. at it from the perspective of I was molested. You understand? Mm, right, right. Within the subculture in our community, that's a badge of honor, you know, to get your first shot at an early age. Right. And so there has to be a deprogramming of the negative subculture. We have to look at things from a more realistic vantage point, realize that was not appropriate. Okay. And right. So I, I see a lot of kids uh, nowadays, they get clowned and they get ridiculed for still having a D card, you know, for right. still being a virgin. And I discuss that in my book as well. You know, um, those are some of the things we have to begin to address because our children are going out there making adult decisions with children's minds. Okay. Right. 
Right, all right. right. So you have to begin to address that. You have to begin to talk about sex. I mean, we always want to hide. And, and, and I understand that there's an appropriate way you have to engage it, you know, but oftentimes a lot a lot of parents just don't have the tools. Right, 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 right. Yeah, uh, uh, Pastor Tuck, you, you, this, this book really jumped out at you. I, I, any, any thoughts immediately just on what Doc is saying, and then uh, you know, and even, 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 even bend, bend it on to the parental side. You can just like come up to you next as a, as a woman uh, who is you know a mom and and, ra- and have raised you know three young men. Uh, talk about it from your perspective. Go ahead, Pastor Tuck. It's 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 the. This this is the particular chapter that 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 that, that really struck me uh, struck a chord with me because he he said some things in there that I've never heard before, but they were they were so uh, revelational from that perspective because we know in society we see men and young women have been raised differently, but in the, in today's society we see things starting to shift even toward that. But mm-hmm. as he said before. Men are raised with that propensity to tell you, you know, you know, you, you need to go out and get you some as early yeah. as possible. Yeah, yeah. We, we're encouraged to that because that's that's supposed to be a symbol of your manhood. Right. And so we're going out and we're doing things because they're teaching us that the earlier we have sex, that's 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 a sign of us becoming men. This is just a macho thing. And so you go get it as soon as possible. You go get as much as possible. But he said something that just blew my mind and I never knew. He said that when we have sex, casual sex, he talked about the fact that when we have casual sex, that the the body uh, secretes a hormone, a chemical called oxytocin, yeah, which is the the bonding chemical that women secrete when they have babies, Mm. which is causes them to bond with their their baby. But the reason is because God designed sex to bond us in relationships, right. And the more casual sex you have, the less your body produces that chemical. Wow. So as young men, we start off having sex early and we start having casual sex. The more sex we have, the less we're able to produce that chemical. So now when we actually grow up and get to the point where we meet a young lady and a young lady decides that this is who we're supposed to be with. And we wonder, young ladies is always frustrated saying he doesn't want a commitment. But it's not really that he doesn't want a commitment, but he's now become physiologically incapable of making commitments. Mm. And there's so much in society that is producing this and we're doing this stuff to ourselves. You take that on top of this dating paradigm, which is now emotionally preparing us right. for for uh for divorce. divorce because we're yeah. saying we're gonna connect and if I don't like it, I'll just break up and make another commitment. And so we're making these short-term commitments. So we're emotionally preparing ourselves to not be committed. And now we're physiologically being prepared not to make a commitment. And now you're having these young ladies doing the same thing. Yeah. And we're even seeing a less quality of women parenting because now society is telling them with this city girl culture, with this hot girl culture to go out and have as much sex. So now they're producing less oxytocin. So now when they're getting married, I mean, when they're having babies, they're let they're they're letting grandma raise the baby because I, I don't I don't I'm not committed to this because they are physiologically incapable of that mother nurturing gene. And so the society it's a further breakdown of our society, all because of this hypersexuality. And we don't realize how serious an issue this is because it's being pushed in our music, right, in our movies, in our televisions, right, in every everything we do. And we're going along with it saying, oh, it's no big deal. I had sex when I was a kid. It's no big deal. Oh, let them do the things that we did. But we don't realize this is a compounding issue and we're seeing it in our society. So, and Doc, I want you, I know you want to jump in there and uh, before I swing it up to Eunice, uh, but but talk, but, but, but that was the chat, but Eunice, me and Eunice read, this, read the, the chapter together. And that was, that, that, that explanation of that chemical was very revelational to us and like wow talk about that doc well we start looking at the bond the bonding hormone oxytocin you know we call it the love hormone as well and so we're seeing a great bit of attachment disorders all right between mm-hmm. the male you know particularly african-american and african-american female okay so we have to begin to address that because our brain has been designed for specific purposes you know even when we look at geese and i hate to parallel this you know mm-hmm. um, Go ahead. Facts is facts. Okay, you have that 
mother goose and father goose, they'll have genetic offspring together, but they'll stay together while one guards the nest and the other hunts because they realize mm-hmm. that's known to their survival. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. So right now we're dealing with some serious issues because we're not really cognizant of what's really going on intergenerationally. So when we look at 78% of kids are being born in the same family household, and I myself was a part of that, that demographic, but mm-hmm. it was because I was not guided. It was because I didn't understand what was going on. And so that's one of the things that really inspired me to document and to publish this body of work was because I had knowledge not only socially, scientifically, but theoretically that could explain the phenomenon and also right. give some kind of solutions. And so we have to begin to deal with those issues and we have to begin to educate our youth and help them understand that it's not just sex. Okay. Right. Come down with the pound town era, you know? Yeah. We have, we, we have our African-American females as well as being programmed to have casual sex. If you look in Houston right now, there's an outbreak of, of syphilis where syphilis is up 128% among African-American females. Wow. 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 Uh, That's just, crazy. Yes, it's crazy, but it's a reflection of some of our practices and some of the things that we're doing in the dark, and it's coming back to to haunt us. And so what's really at at risk right now is the family system, which is the basic unit for survival, okay? Mm -hmm. When a man and a woman cannot connect and they cannot work together to ensure their offspring survival, that child is being placed at a serious disadvantage, okay? We have to be a lot more methodical and a lot more purposeful about our reproductive practices. The reason why I can speak on this is because I myself am a part of that demographic. But that was because I really didn't understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my purpose in this book was to create some kind of awareness and some kind of um, information that would help to equip us. Had I understood that when I was 13, 14 years old, chances are I wouldn't have put a lot of my identity into my sexuality. You understand? And so we're right. seeing a lot of that as well with black men with identity crisis. All right. You have black men that are still 45, 50 years old. They're still saying stuff like, like, like you said, um, like a tune day, you know, uh, uh, um, can't, can't have one woman got to have three. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a whole song. It's a, it's, yeah. yeah. It's a whole Correct. culture. Got one, more, Correct. Got one whole. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So that type of stuff is really being programmed and pushed into a group of people that's really in danger right now. Right, yeah. right. All right. I want I want to jump in there because I want I want to ask you. It's two two points I want to get to. I want to get to something that happened to you in college uh, because of the musical culture. Something you experienced where you literally just really dodged your life being in jeopardy uh, by by culture by 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 music and media I will, I'm, I'm gonna come to that in just a minute but i want to ask you this before i swing it to yanissa is there a way to restore the chemical oxy, oxytocin is, am i I'm pronouncing it properly y- yes it is the, the brain will heal itself just with just with addictions you know with any kind of inappropriate behaviors if you're right. able to identify the issue and provide the support all right and get the proper treatment or therapies, the brain naturally wants to heal itself. The problem right. comes whenever the person doesn't recognize it as being a problem, okay? Right. Uh, we live in a subculture now, a negative subculture, where a lot of people don't believe that it's an issue to have casual sex in the, in the run of month. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was one of those individuals who wasn't in that awareness as well. You understand? Right. So that's, yeah. one of, that's one of the reasons why I chose to share this in this body of work because if you don't know you just don't know but it's time for us to to come into you know a position of awareness where we can begin to address those issues so again the mind will heal itself but you have to begin to become into the awareness of exactly what it is we're dealing with yeah yeah not only from a spiritual perspective but also from a scientific perspective that's where neuroscience comes in right we have to also understand that the mind malfunctions okay yeah yeah. When y'all yeah. think about it, there's been times in my life when my mind malfunctioned. Oh yeah. Right? Oh yeah. When I mean malfunction, what you had going through your mind wasn't really reality. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't realistic. Right. right? You were going through a trauma, and so with a lot of African American people, we experience so much trauma 
And sometimes it impairs our ability to make sound decisions. Right, you know, right. We have to really deal with the trauma, heal from the trauma, and move forward in our lives. Y'all, this is this is uh, Dr. Terrence Wells, y'all. His book is Black Sunshine, A Guide for Raising Black Males into Intelligent, Well-Adjusted Men in the 21st Century. I want to get you listen to the conversation, and uh, we're short on time. Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Before we say that. Yeah. What he was just talking about is about the mind healing itself. The other thing about that, if casual sex is how we ended up getting in that physiological condition, abstinence and celibacy is one of those things that's going to help you get into that position. And that's why we mm-hmm. have to explain first the, the ramifications of that activity and then abstain from that activity to give that mind that time to heal. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's good. That's good. That's real talk. And I, and I, and I, I was driving from the airport the other day. And uh, uh, I, of course, you know, you, I don't see the sign coming in, but coming out, there's a big syphilis warning uh, it, on a billboard coming from the airport. Uh, so clearly, I don't know if it's 128 percent, but the numbers clearly have creeped up in Columbia, South Carolina for whether CDC or DHEC or whoever brought that billboard to spend good morning to say, hey, syphilis is up. And they had an exclamation mark. And then there's another sign that says 50% of all of the current HIV AIDS cases are in people under the age of 30. There's, that's another billboard. So so clearly we're living with some reper- re- ramifications and repercussions of our own uh, life choices and decisions. Yunissa, as a mom, hearing this conversation, of course, me and you reading the chapter together, what's your immediate thoughts on, you know, you having raised three uh, young men yourself? Well, I mean, there's so many thoughts. Um, uh, you know, when we talk about you know, generational curses and things that, like that that mm-hmm. always come to mind. Um, I think we've been pretty transparent with our kids, probably. Yeah. You too much. Right. Um, at a very early age. <laughs> and so the child coming home from kindergarten after explaining to other children in the class how babies are made. Yeah. Um, I want them to daddy. know. <laughs> that was his daddy. Um, so um, for me, I think that one of the, I guess, the most important things is that we've been consistent you know, one thing, you know, we've been consistent in doing with our kids, all of them, not just the boys, is being really transparent about our own journey. You know, how we, um, you know, I got pregnant at 19. And um, and you were young, too. You were what, 20, 21. Right. And so, um, and, uh, you know, to your own admission, mm-hmm. you were, you were um, what's, the, what's a really good word? I'll let you use the word for what you were when I met you. I was a man whore. I was a whore. He was a fool. See, I wasn't going to say it. I was going to let you Call say it whatever it. category you want to. I I'll was a straight man whore. It. It, it was, it, she, well, she right. How I described it. I'm glad it. she took a chance on me. She how, was. how I described it to your daughters, I said, your daddy was a dog. So, you know, that's the, you know, that was the equivalent. Because um, that's what we called them back then, yeah. right? Um, but, you know, it, you know, but it gives them insight because, right. you know, they understand that their dad has been, a man who has, you know, um, renewed, been, you know, renewed, <laughs> but also in terms of fidelity, um, you know, he always gloats that his, his, his credit score is, is really high on a fidelity um, scale. And so just being, it's like we got taken out of the, I'll say out of the game pretty yeah. early. Yeah. Um, 19 and 21. So after that, it's like, okay, you know, we don't want to have that replicated. You know, mm-hmm. and because I see, I see some of those those um, those trends, those generational things in right. our family. Right. And so the goal has been to not allow our children to duplicate that. So. Right. Um, that's important. Yep. Y'all listen, I'm going to come back and get some more of y'all comments in one more again uh, before we get up out of here. We are way uh, over time and we are out of time, but we still I'm going to get some closing thoughts from uh, Dr. Wells, Pastor Tuck. I'm going to find out when Dr. Wells is available to come back on the show because we didn't get to that second chapter that I want to talk about, which is rat poison. which I think a lot of us don't recognize today that is affecting our young people at an astronomical rate, particularly our young women. Let me tell you something, and I'm going to say this right here, I, and I know some of the people who, who are involved with this right here, but the, the way that we are promoting sex to our young people, it is horrible, it is deplorable, and there's consequences and repercussions when you boldly train and promote sexual sin. There's a song out there called the Margarita Song. One margarita, I'm going to open my legs. Two margaritas, I'm going to give you some... That's a song, y'all, and it's and it's a viral sensation. 
And you got companies sponsoring it. And you got you you got major stars getting involved with it. And I know the people who put it out. And I'm saying this right here publicly. That's a god doggone shame. And guess what? Somebody need to talk to you about it. And I hope you change your ways and your colors. And I do not care if you don't like what I'm saying. I could care less. Because when you boldly say that to, to knowing that's being promoted and marketed towards young black females, the consequences and repercussions are yours. It is what it is. Yeah. You'll be right back, y'all. Hold, hold, hold on, Doc. Let me, let, me play. let me get some more commercials in, and I'm going to come right back. I'm coming straight to you. Hey, family, we're almost out of time, but we still got a little bit more left. This is the Akitunde Show. Don't y'all move. Looking for promotional products and apparel? Look no further than P&B Promotionals. Place your brand and logo on just about anything with P&B Promotionals over 800,000 products. Caps, travel mugs, drawstring bags, water bottles, stadium cups, umbrellas, tote bags, and t-shirts. P&B Promotionals is a nationally certified advertising company. Log on to pbpromotionals.com and start your order now. pbpromotionals.com Imprinting the best or less. Hello, my name is Dr. Damon Daniels with Pathways to Wellness, a division of Wellspring Family Medicine. We're excited to be partnering with the Healthy Laughter Comedy Series. Our vision at Wellspring Family Medicine is to bring you the most up-to-date, cutting-edge medical tests to help you optimize your health. For instance, we have a pain-free, simple tool that takes 20 minutes to help you understand your heart disease risk. In addition, we'll be offering online courses to help you manage your diabetes, high blood pressure, or high cholesterol better. So connect with us on Facebook at Wellspring Family Medicine to take advantage of all the offerings we'll have to help you live a healthier, happier life. Stop walking in front of the prophet. Oh yeah. Y'all we coming to the end of the show. Coming to the end of the show, we are out of time. 11.56 a.m. Tuesday, the 8th of August. And uh, this is Dr. Tune Show. Listen, y'all, again, thank you to Wellsprings Family Medicine for sponsoring and supporting Healthy Laughing. Huge shout out to my personal physician, Dr. Damon Daniels, who came up and came and uh, showed up as a sponsor in a big way. Again, Healthy Laughter season has kicked off, and the official kickoff will be coming up next first Sundays right here in WF Media Studios with my brother, Marcus D. Wiley. He'll be in the house for the official kickoff of Healthy Laughter season 2020. Three. Listen, um, Doctor 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 Wells, you 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 were about to say something before we went to break, and sure. uh, as we go on around the table with our closing comments, real quick, Doc, tell us, uh, give me give me your thoughts on what, what I was saying there, sir. Okay, you mentioned um, the Margarita song. Yeah, they were given specific instructions mm. to ingest alcohol. One margarita, I'm I'm going to open my legs. Alcohol weakens your inhibitions. All right. Right forms your prefrontal cortex where you will make decisions that you wouldn't normally make if you were sober. Right. So when we look at that type of programming through music, all right, that's powerful. And so these are the type of instructions that our youth are receiving. And they're practicing this stuff now. All right? yeah. They're drinking margaritas and they're doing some of the things they've been commanded to do. And so um, I, I just want to thank you all. And Brother Tuck, hey, man, I really appreciate you know, your presentation and what you shared today. And I appreciate the fact that you all value the information that I, that I, that I offer, because that means a lot to me. And that's why I do what I do. I, I just want to help anybody in any, any way I can. Okay. Amen. As we wrap around the past, Tuck and Unissa for the closing comment, Doc, tell us real quick where they can get the book one more time, Black Sunshine, a guide for raising black males into intelligent, well-adjusted men in the 21st century. You can go to Barnes and Nobles or Amazon. I would prefer Amazon, or you can go directly to my website. It's B L K Sunshine S O N Shine dot com. Um, if you wish to go there, I can send you an autograph copy, and so that way you can buy direct. So the direct is B L K Sunshine S O N Shine dot com. Thank that you, Doc. 
We All appreciate right, that, sir. Doc, we got it. Soon we hang, soon yeah. we end the show. We, we got to talk about when we can get you back on. Uh, Yunissa, final comments, ma'am, as we get ready to end the show. We got two minutes or less. Yeah, I, I really don't um, have anything to add. It's been so full, and I and I definitely would love to have uh, Dr. Wells back on so we could finish this conversation. But um, it's been it's been a lot. It's been a lot said. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming on and and, um, and sitting in for Donna. Uh, uh, lady, um, yeah. <laughs> Pastor Tuck, final thoughts, final comments, sir. What, we, got, we got less than a minute. Hey, man, the, the wisdom he offered is, is a blessing to the body, man, and I'm I'm just proud of what he's doing. Like you said, just keep doing the good work. Amen, y'all. We got to get out of here. Um, we got coming up on another room coming up on Clubhouse right now in the Kingdom Business Network. We, sh- we appreciate our Kingdom Business Network family. Hey, Facebook. Hey, YouTube. We appreciate y'all. Facebook, we know y'all kind of censored us today, but it is what it is. We'll talk about that later. Hey, we'll be right back here Thursday. Um, I don't know what the topic going to be Thursday. I, what I had, had planned, I'm telling what might happen. I'm going to see if I can get Doc back on. He may or may not be available. We're going to see. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all, family. This is the Day Show. And until next time, we're going to see y'all when we see y'all. Peace.